All right. Over the last couple of months, I have reviewed a few eyepieces. And in today's video, I would like to talk about the different characteristics and features uh, of an eyepiece that are most relevant and should be taken into consideration when uh, deciding to purchase a new one. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to BD Observatory. If you're new to my channel, I like to talk about astronomy equipment. I like to review eyepieces, telescopes and telescope accessories in order to give you guys a better understanding and maybe help you with your purchase decision. So if you are looking for this type of information, then make sure to subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell icon so you'll get a notification every time I upload a new video. All right, eyepieces work by gathering all the reflected or refracted light from the telescope and focusing it on a single point on your eye's retina. They do this by employing multiple lenses that refract the light in such a way that your eye sees the optimal final image. As you surely know by now, there are a lot of options out there for eyepieces and they differentiate themselves in a number of ways. One of the most popular motivation for purchasing a new eyepiece is to obtain a certain magnification when using with your telescope. So let's start with the focal length, because the focal length is directly responsible for the magnification of your optical system. As you can see in this diagram, the focal length of an eyepiece is the distance between the focal plane and the lens of the eyepiece. And this is measured in millimeters. You see, your telescope gathers the light and focuses it in a single point. This is called the focal plane. From here, the eyepiece takes the image and magnifies it. The equation for figuring the magnification out is focal length of the telescope divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. This means that the shorter the focal length of the eyepiece, the higher the magnification gets. For example, my 12-inch Dobsonian telescope has a focal length of 1500 millimeters. If I were to use it in combination, with the Teleview Delight with a focal length of 9 mm, I would obtain a magnification of 1500 divided by 9, which will get me 166.6. So if you want to observe planets, then you will need a higher magnification and thus an eyepiece with a shorter focal length. If you want to observe larger objects like the Moon or deep sky objects such as the Orion Nebula or the Pleiades, you will need longer focal length eyepieces that will get you a lower magnification and where you would see more of the night sky. When choosing an eyepiece based on a desired magnification for the whole optical system, it is important to keep in mind the following points. Each telescope has a maximum theoretical magnification. Above this magnification value, the image will lose detail very fast. The value for the maximum magnification is roughly two times the aperture of the telescope. Even if your telescope has an aperture size of, let's say, 200 millimeters or 8 inches, this doesn't necessarily mean that you can observe every night with the maximum theoretical value for the magnification of 400x. This is due to the seeing conditions. You see, these seeing conditions heavily impact the magnification you can actually use. So for example, I live in Germany and most of the time, I would say 90 to 95% of the time, I can only use values between two and 300 times magnification. You also need to take the telescope's focal ratio into consideration when deciding to purchase a new eyepiece. The focal ratio being the aperture size divided by the focal length of the telescope. So, if your telescope has a focal ratio higher than f6, then you're fine and any eyepiece will probably work. However, if the f ratio is smaller than f6, then you will need to get a higher quality eyepiece that is well corrected. Otherwise, you'll start to see chromatic aberrations at the edges of the field of view. 
Chromatic aberrations is where the stars won't appear as a single point of light, but as elongated light sources resembling comets, even if there are eyepieces out there for almost every possible focal length. Doesn't necessarily mean that you need all of them. In fact, having just three eyepieces is plenty enough. You could get one with a shorter focal length, three to nine millimeters, one with a medium focal length, 9 to 15 millimeters, and one with a longer focal length, 19 to 32 millimeters. This will give you enough flexibility to get you started with this hobby. Later, you could add a decent 2x bellow lens to your collection and effectively double the eyepiece combinations. This is because a 2x bellow lens will double the focal length of your telescope thus doubling the magnification of every eyepiece inserted into the bellow. In our example from before, the focal length of the telescope with a bellow lens will increase from 1500 to 3000 mm. This, in combination with a 9 mm delight, will yield a magnification of 333 instead of just 166. Here I can recommend the 2x bellow lens from Teleview. It's very well made and the extra lenses added to the entire optical system aren't noticeable at all. It should be also compatible with any one and a quarter inch eyepiece. The focal length of an eyepiece is also directly responsible for its size. Eyepieces come in two different standard sizes, one and a quarter inch and two inches. The longer the focal length, the larger the lenses need to be and so the necessity rises for for the manufacturer to put these lenses into a bigger form factor that's why the longer the focal length the bigger the eyepiece if i'm not mistaken the longest focal length that can still fit in a one and a quarter inch eyepiece size is 24 millimeters one of the best eyepieces out there that fits this criteria is the 24 mm panoptic from Teleview. Another important characteristic of an eyepiece is its apparent field of view and it's measured in degrees. The apparent field of view of an eyepiece is directly responsible for the amount of sky you can see when looking through the telescope using this eyepiece. For example, the 9 mm delight has an apparent field of view of 62 degrees, which means that if you look through the eyepiece without putting it in your telescope, the amount of sky you can see has a diameter of 62 degrees. You can use this value to calculate the actual or true field of view by dividing the apparent field of view of the eyepiece by the magnification. This is not a precise way of calculating the actual field of view, but it's accurate enough. So, in our example with a 9mm delight and a 12-inch product, we got a magnification of 166. Now, if we want to calculate the true field of view for this setup, we need to divide the apparent field of view of the delight with the magnification, obtaining 0.37 degrees. To put this value into perspective, the angle covered by the diameter of the full moon is about 0.5 degrees. Next up is the eye relief. The eye relief is measured in millimeters and represents the maximum distance from the last surface of the eyepiece to your eye in order for you to see the whole field of view. For example, the 9 mm delight from Teleview has a long eye relief of 20 millimeters, which is great, especially if you wear glasses. By comparison, the 6 mm ultra wide angle from TESS Optics has only 15 mm of eye relief. Every time I'm using this eyepiece, I always need to take off my glasses when I observe the night sky. So if you're looking to buy a new eyepiece, then it's important to put a bit of thought into what exactly you want to observe with this new eyepiece. If it's for planetary observations, then you will need a shorter focal length with the apparent field of view not being that important because the planets appear small in the night sky, even at high magnifications. Here, I personally value long eye relief more, which is why I can recommend the Delight series from Teleview. If it's deep sky objects that you're interested in, then you will need eyepieces with a longer focal length and a wider apparent field of view.
a good recommendation would be the 24 mm panoptic from Teleview. Or should you want a 2 inch eyepiece, the 32 mm Swan from Omegon. Even though the characteristics that I have mentioned up until now are arguably the most important ones when it comes to choosing the right eyepiece, there are some features that you should also look out for. This could have a big impact on the image quality and on the viewing experience as a whole. For example, the non-reflective coating on the lenses of an eyepiece is very important as it helps reduce internal reflections and light scattering. Some coatings can even absorb unwanted wavelengths of light. As a rule of thumb, the more premium the eyepiece, the better the coatings. So when purchasing a new eyepiece, look out for where it says fully multi-coated lenses. Another important feature is darkened edges for the lenses of the eyepiece. This is a feature most common among premium eyepieces and is designed to reduce unwanted light reflections and refractions inside the eyepiece. Not only the lens edges should be darkened, but also the inside of the barrel should be painted black as well. If you value a comfortable viewing experience, then you might consider eyepieces with an adjustable eye guard. I personally like the twist-in system used by the Swan eyepiece from Omegon. If the eyepiece has a long eye relief, then having an adjustable eye guard can help you set the distance to the eyepiece lens just right. Now I know that there are a lot of characteristics and features that I haven't mentioned in this video such as a field stop or element groups for, for the lenses in an eyepiece. However, going into all that detail would have made this video unbearably long, so I decided to keep it relatively short. I also think that um, the presented details in this video are enough to get you started with this wonderful hobby. I will also leave a link in the description below for every equipment piece I mentioned in this video. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and also subscribe to my channel. If you have questions or feedback, please leave a comment below and I will get back to you. All right, thanks for watching and catch you guys next time.